Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's Mini PC Wednesday here on the channel. We've got another Mini PC to check out. They keep coming in and I'm always having fun reviewing these things. This one actually strikes a nice balance between price and performance. This is the GM K-Tech K11 and it's got a Ryzen 8945HS processor. That is an eight core, 16 thread chip. And what's nice about this one is that it's not as expensive as some of the Ryzen AI mini PCs we looked at a couple of weeks ago yet the performance is pretty close. So we're gonna dive into this one and see what it's all about in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from GMK Tech. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $599. Note that this price requires you to click on a coupon on the Amazon product listing to get it. Without that coupon, you pay a lot more. So be sure to click it, otherwise you'll be paying way too much for this mini PC. As I mentioned, I do think this strikes a nice price versus performance balance. It's not all that less powerful than the AI Ryzen mini PCs we've looked at a few weeks ago, but is much more affordable. This one's got that Ryzen 8945HS processor. It has a one terabyte NVMe SSD. It also has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 megahertz RAM. You can get at the RAM and the storage just by popping the lid here. You have to unscrew some stuff there to get into it, but you can see your RAM there on the right. You can upgrade to 96 gigabytes of RAM. On the left-hand side, you have an open NVMe port there along with one that's populated by the SSD that it comes with. So you do have a good amount of expansion potential with this one, uh, not only with the RAM, but also with the storage. You could load up a second NVMe SSD in here and dual boot Linux and Windows if you want. Lots of potential on that and very similar to what we see on other mini PCs. Now, as far as ports go, you've got some good ones on here. My new favorite port out in the computing industry now is this Oculink port here. This is a direct bus connection. They've got adapters now that you can plug in full on desktop cards to these mini PCs just by popping things into that Oculink port. I've done videos about this, so definitely check it out. GMK Tech now has a hardcover book size eGPU that can also connect to that port. Next to it, you've got a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port. This is compatible with Thunderbolt, so you could use Thunderbolt external devices, including GPUs with it. In fact, you can have two GPUs connected to each uh, port here, which is pretty cool. Here you've got two USB-A ports. These are running at 10 gigabits per second each. You've got a convenient headphone microphone adapter there in the front next to the power button. On the back here, you've got two USB 2.0 ports for connecting up keyboards and mice. You also have a display port output and an HDMI output for video. And because these USB 4 ports are all compatible with Thunderbolt, you can also output video on those for a total of four display outputs. And you've got two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports here. I did test those ports a little bit earlier and found that they performed to uh, where you would expect them to be on both the downstream and the upstream. I happen to have a very fast internet connection here and I can run internet speed tests to uh, check the performance of these ports. There's the downstream and here is the upstream. So great performance on the networking side. Wi-Fi on this one is a little better than some of the other mini PCs I've looked at. We've often seen Wi-Fi not performing as well as it should given the uh, interference that we often find with the metal cases that these things have. So my downstream performance was not as good as I was hoping. It does pick up here towards the end of the test. It's better than the B-Links and some of the other GMK techs we've looked at recently, but from a downstream perspective, it could go a little bit quicker. My uh, Wi-Fi access point here can regularly do about 700 megabits per second in both directions. My upstream performance was a little better here. As you can see, it crossed about half a gigabit or so. So the Wi-Fi is not as compromised on this as it is on other mini PCs. Uh, you do have that other USB 4 port here on the back. So you've got two 40 gigabit per second ports and your power adapter goes in here. This has a 120 watt power supply. I found from a power consumption standpoint, it's about 13 and a half watts idle give or take and about 96 watts under full load. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. I got everything booted up here. You do get a copy of Windows 11 Pro pre-installed that is fully activated. And one other note on this machine is that it's got a pretty cool RGB effect on its upper cooling fan. 
The fans are not all that noisy. We'll talk more about that a little bit later, uh, but I did think that was kind of cool. I think you can disable the uh, lighting here in the BIOS if you don't like it. Why don't we start off with some basic stuff here. We'll boot up the Brave web browser and head over to the nasa.gov homepage. As you can see, everything just kind of springs to life on this. It is a very, very quick experience, as it should be, given what we have for our processor inside. And it really is amazing the kind of performance you can get out of something that really isn't all that expensive. And as you can see, web browsing is no match for this one. I also ran some YouTube video on this at 4K60. And here we did have a couple of drop frames here or there, but nothing substantial that I could notice. Overall, the video playback performance was just fine and it will do well with streaming services and other things that you might want to play on it. So all in from a basic standpoint, performance here is quite good. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 29.4. That puts this right in line with its peers in the marketplace. It's even pretty much within the margin of error with one of the newer Ryzen AI 9 processors. Now, I also did some video editing in DaVinci Resolve. This is a simple 4K 60 project, just stringing some clips together. As you can see, the simple transitions can render out in real time just using the AMD processor's built-in graphics. So all that is good. But when you go to do more advanced things like color grading or effects, that's where you feel the limitations of these internal GPUs. Even the more expensive mini PCs struggle with this. So what I did is I dropped in a, an effect there that takes quite a while to get rendered up and visible. I think it was about 20 or 30 seconds here. I'll skip ahead until it actually renders in. Uh, so there was a bit of waiting there as the complexity of the edit increased. So this is where you're going to want to have one of those external GPUs attached to this for the best performance. But if you are doing basic video edits, the kind that I do on this channel, I think it will perform just fine. This will probably also do pretty well for live streaming, especially given that you've got those two Thunderbolt compatible interfaces on the front, along with the Oculink. So let's move on now to some gaming. This is Cyberpunk 2077. I found the performance here to be very good and on par with some of the other mini PCs that are currently out there in the marketplace. You're not gonna get crazy fast frame rates or high resolutions here. This is 1080p at the lowest settings, but still it's able to maintain a playable frame rate that is usually north of about 45 frames per second. And as you can see here, it does creep up as the complexity decreases. You've got that powerful CPU and the GPU on this little chip is no slouch either. So you can get away with some casual gaming on this one even though it's not gonna be up to par with what you might get out of a beefier PC. Now again, you can connect up external GPUs, so you can increase its performance, but I think if you're serious about desktop gaming, a mini PC is probably not what you're going to be picking up, but still it's impressive to see what you can do out of these things. They make for great retro emulation stations, given that you can run a bulk of the retro consoles that are currently emulated right now with really good performance. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 3,409. But take a look at the Evo X1 at the top of the list there. That is a more expensive PC running with the new AI9 processor. And the performance gap is not significant here. So you're not gonna see a huge frame rate difference in Cyberpunk on that more expensive PC versus this one which is another reason to look at some of these kind of in the mid-range if you are looking for something powerful but not all that expensive. I also ran the 3D Mark stress test and there we got a passing grade of 97.2%. You can also see the temperature of the CPU at the time that that was running. So it is able to maintain its performance even under heavy sustained load. The fan is not all that noisy on this. You will hear it spin up uh, especially when it's placed under load, but it's not an overbearingly annoying, obnoxious fan. Even when the fan on the top here is spinning like it is now, I can't hear it. So when you're using this as a regular desktop PC, it is generally very, very quiet. And even when it's under load, it is definitely not as loud as some of the other mini PCs I have looked at. And like the more expensive mini PCs, you can also run local AI models on this one, given how much RAM we have. So I do have the Gemma 3 12 billion parameter model currently loaded on the PC here. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job spitting out some text. And of course, these local models are not as good as the ones you'll run on ChatGPT or on Google Gemini, but they are getting more and more capable. And the performance I'm seeing out of local AI on this machine is about what I saw out of the more expensive one. 
At the moment, Olama doesn't recognize the internal GPU, so it's running everything off of the CPU. And again, the performance here, at least from an output perspective, is about the same as I saw on the more expensive PC. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up Ubuntu, and everything got detected properly. That includes the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the audio, the video worked fine at 4K60. And as you can see here, hopping around through different apps, it was a very nice Linux experience in addition to being a very nice Windows experience. And with your two Ethernet ports on the back there, you've got a lot of potential for server usage with this PC. You can crank the RAM up to 96 gigs and load a whole bunch of Docker containers on there and maybe get your drives hooked up over Thunderbolt or Oculink and you've got yourself a nice core for a do-it-yourself NAS box. So all in, I think this is a great value, a nicely performing PC. One other one I would direct you to if you're looking for a deal is the GMK Tech K8 Plus that we looked at recently. It's not all that much slower from a performance perspective versus this one. It's got the same case, actually. It looks very similar, and you might be able to find that one for a little while at a lower price. So check it out, see what is making the most sense financially. And I think either way, you're gonna get yourself into a nice little mini PC here that I think delivers good performance for its price point. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.